Hello basketball coaches and basketball players. Today I'm going to talk to you about what I call the horns motion offense. Now this is an offense that you probably have never heard of because, well, it's not very common. Anyways, so let's get down to the clipboard. Let's check out this basketball play. So I'm going to show you this play up against no defense at all at first, then we'll kind of match in and mix in some different defenses. This is also a read and react type of offense as well, so I will explain the different options uh, later on in this video. But first, what's going to happen is we're going to pass to one of these two players up top, and that will always be the thing that we're going to do throughout the whole play. So we're going to have player one pass to player five at first. He is going to go and set a screen for player three, and player three has two different options. He can go and cut towards the rim, or he can pop up to the point. One of those two options are going to be open. Now, if he cuts towards the key, again, this is reading the defense. If he knows that the defense is going to cheat, then he might just pop up to the top, and this will be a dribble handoff. But... If that's not the case, if this is like the first time we're running it and that defender gets pinned on player one, player three is going to go and cut towards the rim. He could be open for that layup. Now, if he's not open, let's say the defense continued through and de decided to continue to guard him. What's going to happen now is player one will stay where he is and we are going to have now player three continuing through and setting a screen on player two's man. Player 2 is going to use that screen, he's going to go pop up to the point, and Player 5 is going to pass to him. Now Player 2 could, of course, hit that shot. And if not, Player 3 is going to then fill out in that spot over there. Now what we're going to have now is Player 2 has the option to pass to Player 5 or Player 4 again. We have now cycled through the motion offense, and of course, if Player 2 was to pass to Player 4, he would go set a screen on Player 3, he would then have the option to cut towards the rim. He could be open for that layup. If not, he's going to go and set a screen on player one's man. Player one is going to pop up top. And then we are going to then reset this motion. Of course, he could take that shot. Now, the tricky part is to now read the defense. So now we have a man-to-man -man defense in the game. We're going to have player four receive that ball. and We're going to have player one go and screen down for player two. At this time, player 2 blue, he could pop up. If this is way too crowded, he could pop right up to the top. And this could be a pass up top for the shot. We would have everybody collapse on that ball. However, if player 1 was to sneak off and go and guard player 2, or if this was a very kind of well-rounded defensive team, we could have player 4 pop off and player 1 cover player 4. Or most likely what would happen is player 2 red might just fight through and be able to still guard player 2. Now, going along with the read and react. I always like to run set offenses off of a motion offense. So we could then have player 5 set up a screen with the continuation of player 2 dribbling over towards that side. He could go and set that screen and roll, roll towards the basket. He could be open for a layup. There's a couple of different options here anyways. However, what could happen now is player two is going to pass to player five. Again, going, setting a screen for player two. I mean, player three. Player three is going to use that screen. If he cuts through and player three is able to drop off on player three, of course he's not open. Now this comes down to the fact of read and react, where now with player three cutting over and setting a screen on player one, if he reads that player four is playing really tight on player four blue, instead of setting a screen over on top for player one to get open up top, he could set a back screen on player one, and if that's the case, player one blue could then cut across the key and could be open for that layup. If that layup's not open, let's say they switched off, player three is then going to go and fill out in that spot. He, player one is going to then go out, set a screen for player two, where player two will now fill that point position. Or what could have happened is player two could have also used that screen. It could have been an, another back screen and player two would then continue through. However, now, if we want to get these players out of that high post, 
and, and we keep on running the same motion offense through, what we could now do is have, instead of player two setting a screen on player three, what we could have is now player two setting a back screen on player four to go down now down towards the low post. Player two would then fill that high post. Player four could be open for that layup. However, if he's still defended, of course, player four could then set a screen for player one and player one would then fill the point position. Of course, it could be open for another three point shot. So still read and react, still screening for different options that are on the court. However, we are still continuing through filling those five spots on the court as well as we can. Now the genius behind this play is of course going up against a 2-3 zone. So by us passing to player 5 in that high post that's going to stretch player 5 out and bring player 3 over. We're now going to have player 1 setting a screen on player 4. However, player 4 is going to be playing in between player 4 and player 5 sort of to cut off the, the possibility of player 4 cutting towards the rim. However, we're going to set up the screen on this side of player 4 and player 4 blue is going to cut baseline and this should be a wide open shot. Now if it's not, if player 3 red was to collapse on player 4, what's going to happen here is now we could have a player 3 who's wide open in that low corner or he could be cutting towards the rim so he could get the mid range or the floater. Now this is a very deadly play. Now let's say player 4 wasn't open. We still have player 3 out in this corner and we have player 1 guarding the inside of player 2 and still the ability to get out to player 3. What's going to happen now, player 3 could also cut towards the rim, this could be an alley-oop, but what's going to happen now is because there's nobody guarding player 3, player 3 red has dropped down to player 4, we're going to have now player 4 blue, he is going to be popping out and setting a screen on player 2 who will now cut towards the rim on the inside because now player 5 is up on player 5 blue what we're going to be having now is hopefully it might be contested for the shot because he's a bit smaller this could be a player 4 this could be a power forward as well so he could have a height advantage on player 3 but this could be a pass and a layup as well now if it's not that's totally fine and we're going to have player 4 fill back out. And we're going to have player 2 set a screen on player 1. Who is then going to be cutting back up towards the point. Where player 5 can pass him the ball. And they can fill out. However, against a zone. By getting that ball and so much screening happening in that key. I can almost guarantee you that one of those options are going to be open no matter what. Now against a 3-2 zone defense, this is an absolute beast of a play. Now if player 2 was really playing player 5 blue tight, he could go and pin him and still get that pass lobbed over to him. Of course now he could drive down the middle, collapse the defense, pass out. There's all those different options, but let's say player 4 was to go and pop out and defend that or at least contest it where he's in the middle personally as a defender myself i would probably play probably three to four feet away from him we would still have a contest behind and what we would now have is player one going and setting a screen instead of setting a back screen or anything on player four i would actually set a screen on this side of player four which would then allow player 5 to pass out to player 2 and we would then have player 2 open for a 3 point shot he could cut down the middle or I mean but down baseline but again against a 3-2 zone many different options with player 5 being uh, not really guarded at that high post and also player 2 not really being guarded once the high post gets that ball out on the wing. Now I hope that this offense helps your team win more games. If it does, let us know in the comments section below. And I will see you guys again later on today for our second video of today.